Hello there, friends. Before we jump into it, uh, if you like what we do here on cpdh.guide, the YouTube, uh, and you want to support us in a free way, because, you know, that's what friends do, hit that like, hit that subscribe, even share the damn thing. All right, on to the show. Here we are. It's the same day in Australia as the tournament he won earlier this morning. I know, timey-wimey, weirdy-weirdy, right? So I woke up kind of early in the morning so I could capture uh, my man Jonathan here. And I know uh, you're kind of confused at this beautiful human sitting in front of me. Uh, you're like, man, where's the, where's the red, blue planet moon thing? Well, he uh, agreed to uh, come on camera. Not the first, but... Uh, hopefully not the last either. I mean, look at this guy. He's, he's kind of awesome, right? So yeah, by a weird circumstance of events and you know, all that stuff, I was able to wake up early and capture him on the same day, which we thought was going to be another day, but we're not going to cover that because we're here now and we're doing it. And so we're talking sanctuary five. We're talking Gretchen. We're talking a variant of the original build who Jonathan helped uh, sculpt with Puzzle. Jonathan played his own list to a victory, obviously, because he's sitting right here with me. So let's see. Some people will know you based on your avatar, based on your interaction, your mod in a few different servers. You're super active in a couple servers. So people know you. I don't know if you would admit this, but uh, uh, people know you for your deck building prowess, uh, specifically with uh, the more, turbo is not the word, but turbo is a word, uh, more aggressive, uh, uh, proactive take on certain combo decks. Uh, not that you're exclusively uh, limit yourself to combo. You play other things as well, but uh, I think you do focus if I if I'm talking about you like I know you, you do like to focus on the uh, the faster, more aggressive builds. Uh, I mean, then that would be Tatiova, Gretchen. Uh, you've got uh, Dargo Kesket, which I don't know if you've played in a while, and then um, Malcolm Roger, which is like the supreme, uh, you know, speedy version of the Malcolm builds. Am I missing any? Yeah, I do love my combo. Uh, hello, guys. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm Jonathan, and uh, my avatar is the Red Blue Planet, as he said. I also go online as XR, with, followed by a bunch of L's and Y's. <laughs> it's not a pronounceable name, but we'll just deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, colloquially uh, among the community, it's X, X, XR really, really, or you know, something. We 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 play, we have fun with it. Uh, typically, everybody knows you as Jonathan now, which is, I mean. It makes it easy for commentating, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, my name on our table is Jonathan. So, absolutely, yeah, yeah, that's right as well. Plus, it's married up with the uh, the red blue planet, so like you can connect the dots between uh, Discord and uh, Moxfield. So, uh, as per usual, uh, well, I would say as per usual, uh, as per new uh, trend. Um, uh, Jonathan, well, actually, let me phrase this a little bit differently. Americans are notoriously difficult to schedule interviews with because sleep gets in the way, right? It's it's actually the Australians that are normal and the Americans that are weird. I understand yeah, that. Yeah. I, I completely yeah, you accept. You guys are the ones upside down. So, Islaine will... Uh, as, as the last interview is lane, will probably be reaching out to you for some sort of deck tech, that sort of thing. Uh, don't know if that'll, you know, does it, what the schedule will look like or when that will look out, look like, but, uh, uh, you've been on his stream a couple of times. So I know you're no stranger to his time zone and all of that. Uh, so when, when, if what have you, if that happens, I'll come back and I'll add the, uh, the link to that interview, uh, into the description of this. So that way. People in the future, future people can uh, uh, follow those streams of uh, content. So, getting back to the real deal, man. So, have you, you haven't had the opportunity to play in many tournaments because a lot of the tournaments uh, uh, offered have a weird starting time. 
you know is that is that yes. correct so uh, yeah so go ahead the common cause tournaments that's happening over in some other servers are at like 2 a.m for me so it's just impossible and sanctuary i couldn't get into the previous one because that one was also at a weird time but bobby's been alternating time zones for the australians which is just me and lotad so that's nice of him so i got to play in this one yeah and i'm uh, glad i did absolutely uh of the tournaments that you played did you have any uh any notable finishes or just in the field or um i think i've only played in one other sanctuary and that was with malcolm rog mm -hmm. and i got one win but uh, didn't go anywhere after that so did a much more uh better showing of gretchen this time which is yeah really happy absolutely yeah so i was trying to what i'm trying to point out there is that uh uh tournaments are hard in australia uh so anybody that's uh, watching this content from down there uh we do have people over here in the u.s who we're wrong we're in the wrong time zone everything's weird we're upside down uh <laughs> we, but we do have uh, tos uh in the states and other places that are trying to organize events to capture uh more of the uh the australian uh the aussie player market so uh hold out hope you know so he's got to play in a couple uh hopefully there will be more uh in the future although ending last night at uh like 10 30 11 o'clock was kind of uh uh strain on me but i'm a big boy i can take my vitamins in the future and and stay up late and all yep. that stuff so okay so before we get into gretchen uh we had talked previously about some of your uh other builds um uh tatiova uh Deskit, uh malcolm roger um with those lists because this will help to define your style which you have in my humble opinion you have a very unique style um what are you what are you looking for when you are uh kind of playing or, or putting together constructing those types of lists which will help us pivot into gretchen a little bit what i'm looking for is decks that can basically win within a really good time limit so we're looking at really fast wins uh usually that's just comboing off with some kind of infinite combo malcolm rograk um the mana from rograk things like spring leaf drum infernal plunge you just go straight into malcolm on turn two turn three turn four just try to win um and it is quite consistent i'm also looking for a lot of consistency and that's where you go into your simic decks like gretchen and teddy over where they don't like try to win fast but they just reach this critical mass where you just keep drawing cards keep drawing cards that your win is just unstoppable and then dagger casket is just a fun thing i've done where you just try to win fast there's no consistency there's no formula you just win or you don't and if you don't just play another game and <laughs> just mm -hmm. keep going like that and notably um uh, dagger casket has we first saw that in 21 2021 is that is that true or 2022 it was it was really you you've been in in on the scene for a while probably uh if if we have a hundred players interacting at some level in the competitive scene uh you were probably within the first like 15 or or so players i started deck building when kamala first came out mm. that was the Oh no, even before Kamala, I was building with Viscopa, Viscopa Guildmage, mm -hmm. and I was already just looking heavily into the competitive scene, so it was quite a while ago, basically before Streets of New Capanna, which was... The beginning yeah, of last year? Yeah, that was. Yeah, I think that was the beginning of, of last year, so 22, yeah. Of, of 22, okay, so two, two years ago then. Right on. And when I say the yeah. original 15, I'm talking about, uh, obviously people have the opportunity to play competitively, not online. Uh, this would be specifically like the online environments, which, uh, I observe. There you go. I was going to say half per view, yeah. but that's, there was, yeah. Yeah. There was a handful of players and we all knew each other really well. And we just always get on gaming just all throughout go, go through midnight, you know, just play some games. <laughs> Right That's great. So, uh, with those other decks, um, I wouldn't think I wouldn't say Gretchen was late. Gretchen was probably in the middle somewhere because this is the original list, uh, the one that Puzzle regularly plays, co-developed by yourself. Um, 
that's been around for a while. Were you were you a part of that original list uh, when he took it to the the variant to that uh, CEDH tournament? Basically, when he started building it, I think I was already like helping him with it, mm -hmm. or I or I might have been doing my own Gretchen stuff, and then we're like, oh, why don't why don't we just join them together and just do Gretchen together? Something like that uh, happened. So there's some timing right there. So uh, um, people still to this day talk about the budget CEDH tournament that Puzzle took down with his Gretchen list that was co-authored by uh, this guy here. It had only a slight modification for uh, that particular environment. Yeah, he ran the um, he ran the band cards, the Aristic and the Fish. So you 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 your impact on the scene. Is, is is been durable it's been it's been long and it's been durable so uh i for one am, yeah well i mean uh you were most people these days won't remember this but you were submitting lists to the uh database that uh, that we had way back when um uh i mean you've been a moderator for uh the uh um i was gonna say the tryhards comic connoisseurs uh, for a little while now, uh, when I set up the doc guide, uh, server, um, you were the first person that I tagged, uh, as a moderator in this server. Uh, not that it needs much moderation. I mean, it's an easy job, right? <laughs> so, I mean, you have, yeah, you have literally been behind the scenes working with, uh, players, uh, helping developing lists, uh, who were some of the other people that you've worked with uh, on joint builds? Um, joint builds. Ooh. There's been a few. Um, I don't know if you remember Matthew. He was here. He stopped playing this format a long time ago, but did a few joint builds with him. Um, I mean, I try to do joint builds like now and again with other people, but sometimes the, the, the build just doesn't work out, so we just close it down. Uh, Desket was actually originally um, with Morgana. I don't know mm. if you know Morgana, but um, we actually came up with that idea together. We had the joint build, and then um, she wanted to go more mid-range, and I wanted to go more you know, turbo and combo. So then I made my own version, and I think she still has both versions. But yeah, so th th that was a joint build. Malcolm Rog was just me, and I have seen that had a tournament win over in Germany. So that was pretty cool to see. Absolutely, yeah. That uh, small tournament uh, earlier this year, I believe, is the one you're mm. talking about. Yep. Okay. So we're we're gonna get to our girl. So Gretchen uh, is a household name, and I made kind of a joke uh, uh, in Sanctuary. Well, last night for me, middle of the day for you, about uh, uh, Gretchen's back on the menu. And what I meant by that is that it's not that Gretchen goes unplayed. I think it's possible that for every tournament uh, that's been held, there's been at least one Gretchen in the deck lists uh, for that event, uh, like for every single event. And I don't know, the, the finishes as of late haven't re really been so notable. So participation being at 100% really means nothing when you uh, there's no capitalization you know, e.g., like top eight, top four, yada, yada, yada. Uh, I might be this old man memory of mine. There might have been a Gretchen in the top four in the last uh, last six months there, or there so. Was. Yeah, yeah. There was a there, in Philly. The last century, there oh. was a Gretchen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's the one. That's the one that I'm oh, thinking. Oh. Well, <laughs> an embarrassment of riches. We have so many tournaments. It's really difficult to remember off the top of your head. So, mm. uh, yeah. So. So Gretchen is one of those things that's always kind of there, uh, but only really like rears her head uh, in this in this way uh, ever ever so uh, every so often. So in this, which is kind of funny, because in this top four uh, there was actually two, so there was a fifty percent chance that Gretchen was going to win. So uh, oh, you can say that. <laughs> um, the funny thing is there was two Gretchens in the top four. There were also two Gretchens out of the 26 players that signed up. <laughs> so it, it was destiny. It was definitely destiny. Okay. So, uh, the original Gretchen build 
pivot to the one that you're playing. What are the notable pieces uh, to your build from the uh, from the joint build? You know, what are those notable pieces, and like, how do they? What I'm looking for is like how they define who you are as a player. Because I get uh, I get pretty high on uh, people modifying uh their their construct deck constructions to their particular play style uh because i believe well uh, a, a knowledgeable player with um you know who knows their deck back and forth could be a ham sandwich could pile it to some some measure of success so um you really kind of capitalize on that with i feel these this variation between the list and these cards that are specific to you let's talk a little bit about uh uh, you know, those pieces, which you're trying to get out of them, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So a few of the pieces that I can name off the top of my head, are uh, cards like Hydroform, uh, Viggy and Graph Mage and Immobilizing Ink. Those are free cards. I know that I don't think Puzzle is running or mm. maybe you might be considering to run them. Uh, they are just free extra combo pieces that help with the combo and consistency of the combo. I mean, I guess that might tell you a bit more about, about my deck building style. Um, then they come up there and there. They're not always like, you know, 100% must be in the deck cards, but I do like them. And then some other like spicy, if you would say, inclusions is Queerin Ranger, which had a good show in that finals. And uh, Revive the Shire, which is just a, a favorite like pick out of mine. I try to put it in all, all of my green decks. It's a worse reclaim in some sense. It two mana puts it straight to your hand. It only targets a permanent, but you also get a food token, so mm -hmm. which is not irrelevant. Go, but long way, yeah. Um, reclaim, of course, can target any card and is instant speed, but a little bit of a trade off. I I don't mind it. I haven't had any problem with it. I mean, it's not like you're not making mana to to cast it. <laughs> <laughs> it exactly, exactly, exactly. Right on. So for those who don't know, um, the, the Gretchen game plan is basically to attribute value over time and through that value present a certain amount of inevitability, uh, you know, at, at the critical turn, you know, uh, so with immobilizing ink, um, Correct. I'm. I'm not an ink player. I'm not a Gretchen player. But ink uh, seems like one of those cards that isn't necessarily meant to, uh, you know, get you ahead. It feels like one of those cards that uh, when you play it, it's like, okay, uh, this is a last opportunity to kind of like dig a little further, like that 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 small percentage more. Uh, am I am I kind of there on the take or? Uh, yeah, it, it can do it can do that. You can kind of uh, loot for your deck, and depending on how much lands your man, your sorry, how much mana your lands make, you might be either losing mana each time, or you might net mana each time. And at that point, you can it's I, six, it's right, or seven. Hit uh, ooh, it's it's like five. The land needs to tap for a five. So you need which, to pay four into Gretchen and one into the ink. Okay. Yeah. Which. Uh, ironically enough, can be challenging uh, to get five mana out of a land. I don't think we're necessarily in a in a meta phase where land disruption or boomerangs are prevalent. So being able to stack up, uh, well, obviously being able to stack up uh, enchantments on a land is uh, entirely possible. Uh, mm. So let's see, uh, what was that other card? Uh, oh, Bajian Graph Mage. Uh, mm, yeah, and that actually won me the finals. That that card, which was great. Absolutely. Uh, so that's the one that's uh, uh, Soul Bond uh, Untap Three. No, so yeah, that's, it's the it's the uh, plus one plus one counter. Yes, plus so pay two mana, untap target creature with a plus one plus one counter on it. Mm -hmm. So and it's got the graft. It comes in the two one one counters. You can move a one one counter when another creature enters, which it can be relevant if you're playing the untap a second. Um, but I run a few cards that give 1-1 one, one counters in the deck, which Puzzle won't be running. So some land enchantments, when it enters, give a counter. I'm running Snakeskin Veil, just because Protection Plus gives a counter. And yeah, so some cards like that, just to, to kind of turn on the line. 
Mm-hmm. So I managed to do that. I managed to do that, get the one one counter on the untap it early just in case. And then eventually when I drew into the wizard cycling uh, card, I just knew exactly what to get. So that's perfect. Uh, I played a little stupid there. Um, so I play uh, the Graph Mage in my Weaver's list, and I too run a suite of instant speed plus one uh, counter granters, some that untap uh, to allow for that. Uh, it's not a popular card amongst uh, green X mana decks because of the ordering that you were talking about. Usually your land, you know, land untapper comes out first, which is the opposite order that you want. So you're almost having to kind of pull, uh, pull punches as it were. But I think you prefaced it in uh, the the correct way, where it's like if you're playing this card and you're playing these other cards that enable these counters, you're proactively putting these counters on these creatures. You know, ensuring that when you do get to the graph mage, which is might be the turn that you combo. I don't think you want to deploy that any other time. So yeah, at the time of combo, it's ready and you just do the thing. Okay. Yeah. I love these specific, uh, insights to the, uh, the cards because, uh, uh, in my humble opinion, I think you bring a certain level of expertise, uh, to this craft and being able to kind of like pick your brain on how you're viewing these particular cards, whether it's in a Gretchen uh, circumstance or some other big mana deck uh, adjacent, uh, I, I think this is super helpful. Uh, so with this tournament here, how long did you know that you were going to be playing in it? Of course, I think you made a promise to Bobby um, like two years ago, two months, something. <laughs> pretty much... The day before he posted the time of the tournament, he asked me and Lotad, like, if the tournament was at this time, can you play? And I was like, yes, like straight away, yes. So before the tournament was even public, I was already in the tournament, basically. Perfect. So uh, that was, uh, I think it was about two months ago. I think that. So with that uh, amount of prep time, uh, did you know what you were going to be playing? Did you, or did you waffle on that? You know, what were you thinking? I, I waffled on it. I originally, so I first started thinking Teddy Over. Teddy Over is a great deck. It does the critical math thing and then into the combo. But then I played a few games on the Sanctuary and didn't didn't have any, like, good success. And the games where I had success, it wasn't, like, like really definitive. Like, I can do this all the time. It was really like, oh, I got lucky kind of thing. Mm. So I'm I'm, resi- I'm resisting the urge. I am so resisting the urge. What do you mean, Tatiova? I'm, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. <laughs> Tatiova's not as good as Gretchen? Well, I, I did it. I'm sorry. Please, right. please well, continue. Let's talk about Tatiova. <laughs> let's talk about Tatiova. Uh, you got the combo line, Ghostly Flicker, mm-hmm. and you got the combo line, a Tidal Bore. And both of them use Mystic Sanctuary, and both of them go through the graveyard. And there's a lot of graveyard hate out there. Mm-hmm. Well, everyone is running Relic of Progenitus. Uh, all the black decks are on Fairy Macabre. It is really hard to get a graveyard combo through this meta. Uh, it's definitely possible. Abdal can do it because they run more than one flicker. Mm-hmm. Um, but Patiova just has ghostly flicker. And because it's the only one that can actually flicker lands, everything else just flickers creatures. So fighting through all the interaction is something that Tadiova will actually struggle with, even though you're drawing. 20 cards in your hand, it's still possible to just lose to a fairy macabre because it's uncounterable. Um, so, and the fact that one combo piece, looking for that one combo piece is actually quite difficult. There's not that many cards that actually tutor for it. Uh, while Gretchen has land untappers and a bunch of different land enchantments, and that's the combo. Like, just, there's make, so many cards. Make mana profit. Combo. Uh, exactly exactly yeah tatiova has the the five land droppers and i well there's i think there's actually six but that that six one stinks so as far as like tidal bore now <clears throat> that to be said about tidal bore combo it's very difficult to interact with so that's the one reason why tatiova has had some preference uh over the years is like this this weird uh, ability to not be able to counter the thing. I mean, you actually have to physically <clears throat> remove the creature as part of that process. Uh, yeah, or, you know, fairy macabre, the title bore, which is the big problem. Mm-hmm. 
and then uh, because you have this bottleneck of uh, of, of pieces, uh, plus uh, you mentioned Tetsuov is drawing cards, but is it drawing is it drawing the enabler cards or is it drawing the protection interaction pieces? Like what cards? It's just drawing more lands. <laughs> That's what I found. So I just had most of the games. I actually just had seven lands in hand, and I'm making my land drop each turn. But because there's no comments that say you can play an extra land, mm -hmm. if there were a teddy over, I think would be amazing. If there were a few comments that say play an extra land, yeah, like, growth, just, growth spiral, and explorer are the only two. But yeah, you mean you they, mean like a permanent is what you mean? I, I think. mean yeah, like a permanent permanent effect. So you can just keep doing it every single turn. Getting two draws off Teddy over would be amazing. But currently, just one land a turn. Even though you got all the ramp spells and things like that, it runs out quickly. One one for one is uh, yeah, not that great value. Mm -hmm. That's why I went to Gretchen. Just sits there and just draws cards. Apparently, just sits there. Mm -hmm. So. so it's actually, it's actually interesting. So of the, uh, so Tatiova, you can be a little aggressive with, uh, with Tatiova. Uh, you can't really be so aggressive with Gretchen, which is kind of, uh, somewhat counterintuitive to what we were talking about or what I was talking about earlier about your typical proactive go, go, go play style. Gretchen is somewhat, uh, you know, you kind of lean back and just, you know, land, 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 go, land, go, land, go. Um, there, there are a couple of lines where you could probably, uh, get there in the first couple of turns, but that's like a 1% kind of, uh, opportunity. So, uh, did you choose Gretchen more because of your, uh, level of comfort with the list or did you, did you see it as, like some sort of uh, maybe meta, you know, awkwardly enough, it is meta, but like some sort of like meta hedge against what you've been observing. Like, like what were your thought processes in, in that selection? Was or Could it just been a natural default, right? Well, my thought process was I'm not playing any combos that go through the graveyard because that's just not going to happen. Um, props to the people who won with decks that did go through the graveyard. But I mean, the finals dropped a turn two relic of progenitus and that was funny because i actually had a combo in my hand when he dropped the relic that went through the graveyard i had archaeomancer and snap so i could now <laughs> the archaeomancer was in my opening hand and it stayed there the entire game i never cast it um which is hilarious but um i wasn't that fussed about it because the re i mean the relic i knew graveyard hate was like there so i wasn't gonna like make a fuss about no i can't combo anymore because there's so many combos in the deck <laughs> Right on. So in this particular finals, I wasn't able to, I was actually playing in the tournament too. So like watching the gameplay, um, as they, uh, commentators went through the, I didn't get to see much footage, uh, at all, except for that last game. Um, oh yeah. Well, let's, let's finish talking about, uh, your prep time. So did you, uh, did you play a lot or did you lean on, uh, your previous experience with Gretchen? Uh, if you did seek to play games like recently, uh, specifically to kind of see what's out there, uh, like, like what was your perspective? Uh, were you looking for, uh, specific matchups or were you, uh, concerned about any specific matchups? Tell me about the last like couple of weeks in your, your tournament prep phase and, and if that was even a concern, I mean, you could have just been like, no, I'm going to jam it and, and go. But I, I feel like you're more of a, a uh, prepared guy than that i was preparing um so i was playing a, a lot of diff well the four decks i have which you mentioned which was teddy over Deskett, malcolm rog and uh, gretchen um i was actually playing more malcolm rog and then in the week before the, the tournament i switched to gretchen thinking that that would probably be my main deck but malcolm rog just in case gretchen didn't work out but in the practice games i had I wasn't like scouting the opposition or anything like that. I was just focusing on my own gameplay and make sure I know all my lines and uh, my win condition. I made really streamlined. Um, it's also different to puzzles. Win condition. He goes through a compulsive research loop, mm -hmm. um, which again does die to a fairy macabre. So I made sure that my loop uh, uses find the path to venture into the dungeon, mm -hmm. and that just uses capsize to bounce it back into my hand, and I can recast it over and over again. 
Uh, so that way I don't have to worry about Ferrum Macabre. I think he might be on reclaim, so he can like respond and get it back and keep doing it. But since I'm not on reclaim, I just had to make sure that my line couldn't be stopped. Doesn't matter because as soon as I make infinite mana, everyone just packs up that axe and goes. So <laughs> while I'm explaining my line, everyone's walking away from the table. But <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Infinite mana. Sweet. Yep. So um did you feel um and I know I'm saying this, it's a little baited because Americans are obviously wrong in our time zones and all of that stuff. Uh, did you feel like you were able to get some adequate enough uh, testing in? Uh, do you have a local meta that you interact with? You know, like, what is what does that play repetition look like for you on a regular basis? Um, well, I only play this format online, and I've only been playing it at the Sanctuary for the tournament practice. I got maybe five or six games in, which is not too bad. Um, I think I won like half of them. So you know, that that was a good showing for Gretchen, um, better than all my other decks. So I was like, yeah, I'm just going to stick with Gretchen. Like pretty much know the deck off my heart. It's, yeah, really good. Sweet. Okay. Uh, light, light tournament time. So the, uh, the finals match was... Uh, Nolan, I can't remember his screen name on seat one in Malcolm Breaches. And then I can't remember the name of the, the person in seat two who was also on Gretchen. And then seat three was uh, Tonus Balonis on his uh, Vol list. And then you in seat four. And of course, you know, we get the commentary uh, version of that on the outside world. You guys get the table talk. Uh, was there any. Was there any matchup in there that you were afraid of or concerned about or anything like that? Um, not really. The only thing was just the previous round before I was also in a pod against the, the Malcolm Breaches player and he, he won that game. So I was a little worried about him uh, winning that game again compared to the other decks. Like I was more focused on, okay, make sure Breaches like can't hit me like that many times mm -hmm. where he puts me to such low health. Uh, which he still ended up doing. As I did bounce his breaches, but um, I were think you were you worried about the cards? The uh, his breaches flips uh, opponents' cards. In fact, uh, it flipped over a freed from the real. In that it, it did, but it was not my freed from the real. So that was that was all happy. <laughs> um, he only hit lands from me, I think. And in the previous game, he also only hit lands from me. So. There wasn't um, much to concern. 34 lands in my Civic decks. So it, the chance of him getting like that one Pacific piece that I need is quite low. So whenever I flip, I'm not I'm not faced at all. I, I'm thinking, even if this is a good card, Gretchen has so many combo pieces, and I just find another one. You know? It's probably, uh, it's I don't know, I, it's safe to say that Gretchen is probably the most redundant combo deck that we have because all the pieces are geared towards making mana and that's all you need to do minus the yeah, just, three, three or four, you know, finishing pieces. Pretty much. Yeah. So but even the finishing pieces, like find the path is a land aura. It makes the land have for two green, which doesn't like combo with anything, but it feeds Gretchen. Absolutely. Draw a card, put a land from your hand and onto the battlefield. Ramp, ramp, ramp. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, as we're moving through, uh, there was a moment where uh, the the other Gretchen player was going to uh, attempt to combo off. Uh, we want to walk us through that because we couldn't hear the table. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. So I had my interaction. I had four mana, but I could only make one blue. And I was looking at a snap and uh, some kind of counter spell on my hands. I think it was like in the gate. Mm hmm. Um, so I could use either one to stop either the high tide or the freed. Um, I decided to wait for the freed and possibly cast the snap just so I could get extra mana to activate Gretchen on the same turn. Um, Tony had the had the negate anyways, and the Gretchen player forgot to use his clever conjurer, forgetting that it had a sorcery speed clause, so he couldn't use his interaction to stop his negate. But if he did, I would have my snap, and the Malcolm Breach player also had a bunch of interaction at the end as well. So. I don't think anyone was worried about him winning on that turn. I think he might have went off a little bit too early, but it is hard to time time the win in those pods. 
Um, I know, especially in a four combo deck pod where everyone is a blue player, mm. for four blue four blue decks, everyone's holding interaction. Um, I think he did choose a good moment to go off. He just got a bit unlucky with um, just the amount of interaction in people's hands. Yeah, so that's a... Uh, that's a really good insight that uh, we as the audience wasn't aware of. Uh, all we saw and heard was the, uh, well, the commentators were on top of it. So uh, uh, I think it was, country, yeah, yeah D- Derek and Alec were, I think it was Derek and Alec uh, during that, uh, and uh, Bobby during that game. Like every, everybody was on top of that. Like, oh, you should have done this. You should have done this. Oh no, oh no, oh no. And then, uh, not recognizing that, uh, you know, the hidden information there is like, maybe it wouldn't have mattered if they prioritized it correctly. That would have, that would have went through everybody's interaction at the table and it was still would have been a failed, uh, attempt. Mm. That's the, that's the back end part that, uh, uh, people didn't get to see and hear. So, uh, as we progress through that game, uh, there's one, card which i feel is uh pivotal for any gretchen build uh and you had it attached to your highest producing mana uh land producing mana and that card is urban burgeoning absolutely mandatory for every gretchen list uh how much mana were you producing uh well the thing is my let's talk about my opening hand first of all my opening hand was urban burgeoning Mm -hmm. overgrowth the glittering frost or whatever the one is that makes it a snow attached for additional so two landed time urban burgeoning three lands on our KM answer so i was looking at turn one urban burgeoning turn two gretchen turn three basically what i did right no, that didn't matter what i drew those were the cards i was playing in that turn and i was looking at the land that has for four mana that untaps on everyone's untap mm-hmm. letting me activate gretchen every single turn uh, eventually the land got to five mana i could have actually used my uh, New Horizons to make it tap for six, but I decided to go against that in case the land got bounced, and I'm glad I did because it did end up getting bounced in the end in the big fight. Uh, so I put that one on my Rhinewood Fours. Um, I stacked up a forest because I have Arbor Elf in the deck, which can untap a forest. Um, there's also, you can also say, why don't you stack up an island because you've got High Tide in the deck, but it's it's uh, it's a trade off. You've got to think about which one you've got to do. I tend to like the forest a bit more, but I never saw the opera off, then it didn't really matter. Perfect. So yeah, uh, you had this, oh, you had this uh, urban burgeoning. It felt like, because you're drawing a card and or playing a land every other person's uh, turn, uh, it felt like you had that forever. And it just seemed I like... I think I annoyed all the other players <laughs> just doing things on their turns. So... Especially I, I at think, the point where I was activating Gretchen three times in one turn. I think that got people a little bit Yeah, absolutely. This is, this is, I mean, I think you drew like 20 cards or, I mean, it was something ridiculous. Uh, I mean, you just had like a mad grip access to uh, everything. Um, the way that it was being talked about is uh, 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 that is the thing that probably gave you the most inevitability uh there um the i don't know if it was so surprising uh in the moment uh but it was surprising to us uh after you had drawn so many cards uh the other gretchen player got a little sick of it and uh cast a capsize with buyback and i think that was uh that was most of their mana if not all of their mana that, and, that was all oh uh, they might have had their land on tap as well but that was pretty much all their lands. Um, it was it was after I just drew three cards of Gretchen, so I was down twelve mana and just had two mana remaining. So it was good timing on his part because I used the memory lapse on the Alec Trickery because I wanted my Quarian Ranger to stick around for a few more turns, uh, not realizing Relic he could just pop it and draw it again, pass it again if he wanted to. Uh, I would have been fine with that because um, at that point I already had the win in my hand on my turn. I just wanted the extra value. I was just getting a bit greedy. Uh, which ended up costing me my land, so I had to I had to um, look at a different line. Which luckily, Viggy and Graph Mage is also a wizard, so just find that one instead of um, the Galvanic, which was what I was originally going to go for. Perfect. Yeah, I think uh, I think what you said earlier about uh, 
um, I present mana and people are walking away from the table. Uh, what I don't think it was apparent. Uh, I think everybody conceded uh, before you actually went through the motions. What was the line that you were going to use? Uh, so we get the uh, graph mage is making the helping to make the mana. So that's the the enabler portion. What was your kill condition? I don't, I don't think I saw that uh, on the stream. So kill condition, basically I draw my entire deck, I capsize everyone's boards, and then I start casting uh, Verdant Haven, which is the land enchantment that gains two life whenever it enters. And I just repeat that to gain infinite life. Then I bounce Find the Path. And Find the Path is the card I'm running different from Puzzle, as I said before, which lets me venture into the dungeon. I go into the Pacific Dungeon, uh, let me find the name here, uh, Tomb of Annihilation, which just drains everyone. Each player loses a life, and then each player um, has to like sack a land or discard a card. And because Gretchen puts all my, basically gives me my whole hand and puts all the lands down, I just sack those. Mm -hmm. Or I just take the damage. I've got infinite life, it doesn't really matter. And then I just keep draining everyone by just looping through that same dungeon over and over and over again. That way I win on the same turn, I present infinite mana. Because most some Gretchen decks, they just make a bunch of, they capsize everyone's uh, board, then they make a bunch of free freeze, and then they pass the turn, goes back to them, they swing out. But in a, in a non-final game, in a timed game, when you're on turns, that won't work. So I just made sure that I can actually kill people on the turn I present infinite mana. Super sweet. Uh, I do. I do like the fact because uh, uh, newsflash, folks. This is my first time hearing uh, uh, the intricacies of uh, Jonathan's build myself. So I do like the fact that you um, have taken some responsibility for um, avoiding the common pitfalls uh, and trying to make it compact. Is not the word that I'm looking for because uh, you know whether or not. Uh, uh, the combo line has more pieces or less what have you you're trying to like compress it all into a, a specific instance and not have to worry about uh uh the various zones normally you know attributed with failing you know graveyard what have you so i do appreciate that uh you're looking at where decks are failing so that's your that's your metagaming uh, to be more pointed, that is specifically how you were um, uh, metagaming, intentionally or not, uh, for right now at present. Because you are correct, uh, there's a lot of, uh, some people would say, probably the co commentators, that there isn't enough graveyard hate, but uh, it, it's actually expressing itself in, uh, you know, I was going to say non-traditional, but very macabre is traditional as well. Just... It goes through these phases of how it's being expressed, and because black X decks, uh, creature decks, are really prevalent right now, uh, that tends to be macabre, which is the worst possible option for uh, any graveyard base. Because, I mean, it's, it's largely in uninteractable uh, in our format. So, uh, your meta hedge was eliminating the need for that graveyard, minus the Snap Archaeomancer, which is just uh good value you know 99 percent of the time anyway so so yeah getting your tournament you know practice in playing those games you likely did see a competitor or two uh, uh sanctuary events are laden with people uh who play uh regularly in the sanctuary i think we had uh a small crew from uh, like in-person crew from like USC, Southern California, uh, come in and play. So they added some new blood and stuff, but they were all uh, largely on meta decks. So new people, you know, same old faces, if you get me. So looking at your opportunity to play, uh, seeing some of the field, narrowing down uh, uh, your win opportunities to a very specific uh, train of thought or line of thought uh, to avoid common pitfalls. Uh, this sounds like a this sounds like a recipe for success to me. I mean, obviously, but is this is this the same kind of thing uh, that you would try to do in following tournaments? Uh, yeah, I I think so. Just I think the deck 
has been built to be as streamlined as possible, especially for tournament play, because I'm trying to win under that time limit and I'm trying to just uh, tune it, if you would say, to beat all the other meta decks and even non meta decks in the format. I'm running a few cards just to stop, um, like Voltron and Aggro decks, which you tend to see sometimes, but not, not all the time. Um, I did actually was surprised at the amount of uh, non meta decks and non combo decks in this, in this tournament. Uh, the finals pod was exactly how I envisioned it to be, though. So mm. I was quite happy with the final pod. I think that that kind of made my win rate a bit higher um, because uh, the weakness of Gretchen is actually just burn, um, just losing fast to things like loyal subordinate. I was I did, was paired up with loyal subordinate and was a little bit worried that if I didn't win fast, I would just die. Um, but luckily, I did end up winning that game uh, pretty fast. It was a turn six win. So. Yeah. Yeah, I played against Lotad too. Uh that uh that poor guy. Uh obviously like turn two, uh subordinate, probably ate twelve life out of everybody. I had uh uh I had to kind of fight to uh get subordinate off the board and then immediately uh the game slowed down to a crawl after that. So Larry is a clock, so I can understand that. What other uh, that's, that's actually a good perspective. Uh, what other, uh, at, if you're a Gretchen player, what is the worst deck that you can see across from you? Uh, that's not Larry, obviously. The worst deck. Um, I'd say any like burn deck that's just full of pingers. I think TPI, uh, Dago Kedis is also another scary one. Cause I'm not actually running that many bounce spells in the deck. I am only running three bounce spells. Maybe four. Mm -hmm. I've got Echoing Truth, Capsize, and Snap. So fighting Voltron can be a bit difficult, um, but luckily you can just tutor for the pieces if you really need them. If you're playing against two Voltron decks, you're probably dead, but that's just variants. Mm -hmm. um, and Burn is probably what gets you the most because you're on that clock. You have to win fast, and Gretchen doesn't really like to move that fast. It wants to just sit back and draw cards and just keep accumulating value and just win the long mid-range grind game. But, yeah. Do you uh, see, I guess Mystic Enforcer would be in that in that Voltron lane, trying to think of, okay, Wilson uh, is a newer, I mean, uh, Hive's been playing it for a few months now, so you've probably had uh, opportunity. Uh, that's a uh, another Voltron-style deck. Um, trying to think of some of the newer stuff. Uh, I was going to say Conrad, but I think I can encapsulate Conrad more, uh, into that lane of, uh, other black X decks that are seeking to do like the, uh, uh, the edict plan. Uh, does that concern you at all? The edict plan doesn't really concern me because they're all like sorcery speed stuff. Like if I... There's other ways. I don't need a land on tapper to untap to win. There's some other ways you can combo. And um, I know Puzzle's running a haste enable in his deck as well, mm -hmm. which is another difference to to my deck. But because of Drawbridge, Breeze Caller, right? uh, he's running Strider Harness. So that's right. That's he might right. be on Drawbridge as well, but yeah, Strider Harness um, is the yeah. That's the one. Yeah, he's running Strider Harness, which I'm not. Um, but we're both on a Borrow Breeze Caller, which is a way you can just win if you have a land that has a five. I uh, you can just. When, when from that, you don't need to wait for the creature to untap or anything like that. And Hydroform is one that I've added, which is another way that gets around the land on tapper problem, where if your land on tappers just keep dying or um, someone just keeps editing, uh, eat, just removing them, you just play the Hydroform and just uh, put the freed on the land itself. Yeah. So that's one way to get around the, uh, the edict plan. Okay, cool. So... Uh, for all of you out there who have, uh, considered picking up this list, you've got some play pattern advice. You've got some good, uh, outlining of specific spells that are either in Jonathan's list or not, um, with, with breakdowns of what those spells are used for. So you can make up your mind, whether or not, uh, it fits your particular play style or not. Um, he's given some damn good, uh, justifications for, uh, avoiding that, uh, the pitfalls of the, the graveyard. Um, 
so the next question is this. Um, for Sanctuary 6, provided the time is amenable, or uh, Common Cause, or any of these other tournaments, uh, you know, if the Americans can get their shit together and uh, schedule some uh, uh, some right proper times, uh, if uh, if that happens for you, is Gretchen going to be your girl? Uh, definitely not. No, no, no. Uh, if I'm winning with Gretchen, everyone's just going to tech their deck to be full of enchantment hate. I am switching to something else. Yeah, I uh, I definitely agree with that. Uh, nobody knew exactly. Well, one person knew what I was playing. Bobby, I told him, because, but he wasn't playing in the tournament. So, uh, yeah, like I've gotten to the mode. There was a, There was a year where I was pretty much predicting like, okay, this is what I'm going to be playing, blah, blah, blah. Some of that was political to try to like force mid range and, uh, uh, control, uh, building, you know, deck development and all that stuff. And you gotta kind of toe the line with that. But otherwise, uh, uh, here lately, I think this is actually the first tournament. Nobody knew what I was going to play like definitively. And I, you ended up playing crackling Drake, right? Yeah. I pulled some, yeah, that was I, a huge, huge surprise to me. So I, I, uh, I was looking at it from the perspective of uh, I am also known as somewhat of a proactive player. At least I th think that's what I'm known for. Uh, so if I switch it up and try to do something a little bit more, you know, draw go, uh, will people not necessarily like interact with me in a particular way? So uh, I do get the the whole like you know switching up. Uh, making making what you're playing variable because um, people seem to lock onto these patterns. Like I, I honestly, I was I was probably this close uh, to playing uh, loyal subordinate, but then I recognized that Lotad would be in here, and I didn't want two. Uh, so it would have been such a fun pod though. Two loyal subordinates. Mm -hmm. The other place is dead on turn three. <laughs> so almost almost played loyal subordinate and. Uh, I almost played uh, my uh, Nat Combo TPI uh, as well. Uh, but the problem is, is like Ryan won with TPI. Uh, I thought Ankylosaur was going to bring TPI, and I think he did. So like this, doing the same thing, the same thought process, if these decks keep showing up uh, to some degree, people are going to, you know, be hyper-focused on like, oh my God, we got to get rid of Gretchen and yada, yada, yada. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to, I, I see, I see the path. So that said, uh, do you think, uh, you were going to bring, you were, you would bring rather, uh, like what you already have, something you already have. Do you have anything that you're developing? What's, what's, what's in the works for my man, Jonathan, what's in the brain? How's uh, it, how's it looking forward? We'll, we'll, we'll see. There's still what, two months until the next century. I think he does it every two months. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll we'll see, and uh, if I can even play in the next entry, because it might be he might adjust it for the Europeans, more for the Europeans, less for the Australians. We'll yeah, have to see what the time zones are like. Absolutely, absolutely. Or or get you to get you to stay up later, uh, take an extra day of holiday or something like that to <laughs> rest rest up. I uh, or or uh, let's see. It's uh, in the evening now. It's early morning for us. So flip flop that. We'd have to start at like, uh, like eight p.m. to put it like mid afternoon, or you know maybe for you. Oh, actually no, eight p.m. That would be uh ten. Yeah, no ten, right? Anyway, I can't do time zone math. Uh, maybe we can just flip flop it where all the Americans are uh, playing through the middle of the night. That way, give you guys <laughs> some uh, uh, midday game action. So, all right, we are at, uh, believe it or not, we are at 54 minutes. Uh, what I'd like to look at is uh, kind of parry off that, uh, that question I just asked about, uh, you know, is there anything that you would do to Gretchen to change it? Uh, you said no, so not said no, but... Uh, uh, you indicated that uh, it's it's somewhat perfect. Are, are there a card or two that you're looking to uh, play with, or are you pretty well refined on the list? 
Uh, I'm not looking at any cards outside of the correction deck currently. I'm currently just looking at the cards that are not performing as well as they should be. So this tournament, I wasn't that happy with, uh, to be honest, Merchant Scroll, mm. which is a tutor, which is like sounds really wrong, but it doesn't actually tutor any combo pieces outside of like High Tide. Mm -hmm. So in both the games I had it, they just ended up finding a bounce spell or an impulse, which felt really, really sad. But um, the other cards I'm looking at cutting is maybe Crop Rotation and Mystic Sanctuary. Uh, Mystic Sanctuary was just ended up being an island in that finals game, and I don't think it did anything in my other games either. And Crop Rotation is basically to get Mystic Sanctuary, but it mm. ends up just being a reclaim. So why not just run reclaim? And then you'll be doubled up on the recursion. So yeah, righteous. Okay, so new spice. I know you. Uh, you said Cormella earlier. I, I neglected to uh, recall that you actually had a Cormella list as well. Uh, it is my most huge deck on Mox Field. It's got over ten thousand views. <laughs> Jeez. Secretly, put the, put it up on the screen. <laughs> checks checks listings. You know, might be. Uh, more than some of mine. I mean, she is a popular girl, right? Uh, so do you, do you have anything uh, in the tank for uh, things that you're brewing, things that you're, like, is there anything recently that you're interested in? You know, getting the gears uh, turning? I'm, all, I'm always brewing. Like, I'm always making new decks. It's nothing new, but I'm also always deleting the decks as soon as I make them as well. <laughs> so... Um, I just have to find a list I really like and stick to it, and I want to get it in paper as well, like, if I do want to consider playing it over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, so I've currently got four lists in paper, the four that we've been talking about. been thinking maybe I um, just look into the, like, the meta decks, like TPI and uh, Abdal and things like that, things that um, I haven't really had any experience with, but mm -hmm. could, could try it out. That's a that's actually an interesting question that popped in my brain to ask you too. Uh, uh, is there any um, is there any like mainstream deck that you haven't played or built or what have you that piques your interest and uh, makes you think I can do that? Maybe not better, but I can do that differently. I can do that my way. Or is there anything out there that looks like that? Mm, I've definitely built every deck that's out there and deleted them just as fast. Mm -hmm. um, things that I like want to do my way, I couldn't really tell you because most of the decks that are out there, for example, TPI and Abdel, uh, other people are already perfecting and spending a lot of time with it. So when I look at the decks and I try to do it myself, I'm realizing I'm just copying like 99 out of the 100 cards. Like it's not it's not going to be my list regardless of what I do mm -hmm. because it's already like, they're already perfecting it there. So I just, you know, copy from their list. Um, there's some like spicy brews that people aren't looking that ahead into, like some of the background commanders and uh, some of the partner variants that people are like occasionally picking up and dropping and picking up and dropping up and trying to brew a few things around that. But um, when I do find a deck I like, I tend to spend a lot of time drawing it. Uh, like I don't just make hundred cards and like play with it straight away. If I really like the deck, I actually spend more time trying to perfect before I even put it out in the testing field. I actually try and get like a really good hundred cards. Mm -hmm. This so, is this is actually <laughs> this is actually something pretty common that I've noticed with people that have some measure of success with these lists. Uh, I don't think I've interviewed a single person uh, that has said, "Well, I saw the list online." I uh, I picked the cards up, I put them together, I played the event, and I won. Uh, there's always this uh, repeatable factor there of uh, you know spending the time interacting with it, having deep, measurable uh, thoughts and and uh, on what cards like you were talking about. Like even though you just won a tournament with this uh, this ninety nine, uh, there's still things in there that could be tweaked, that could be better. So it just shows, you know, it, it kind of preaches the, the, the concept of like this persistent, constant honing, uh, developing, uh, not only of the, 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 the list, but the person, uh, as well. So I, 
I'm really appreciative. I don't know. Maybe the next, maybe the next person, guy or gal who I interview is going to be like, yeah, I just found this deck on the street and showed up at a tournament, paid my 16 bucks. And here we are. <laughs> I doubt it, but you know, you know, uh, maybe there's a, there's always, there's, there's a non-zero chance as they say. So, all right. In these last moments, is there anything you want to you share with the, uh, with the folks? Uh, as we close this thing out, I can well, maybe roughly go through my first few rounds of the tournament because I don't think we've talk, talked about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, if, uh, it, round, if you like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so round one, I was also in C4, which was unfortunate. Um, I misplayed that game completely. I drew all three of my bounce spells and I chose the wrong targets for all three of them. <laughs> Uh, so that game ended up being a draw, and which got me the the one point, which pushed me a little bit ahead. Won the second game against Loyal Subordinate. As I said, he was really the only one I was worried about. There was an uh, Abdal player and a uh, the Wilson Far Traveler player, Hive, that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. And they tried to throw some interaction at me, but I just um, yeah, shrugged it off with a few counter spells and uh, just comboed off pretty fast. It was like turn six, but it was I was player C1 in that. Pod, so it was pretty much turn five for everyone else. And turn three was that game against Malcolm Breaches, which was quite unfortunate because the game was looking like to be a draw. And then Malcolm Breaches just acquired this huge storm with uh, Erebor Flamesmith. He attached the equipment to it that made it into a pirate. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really know the rulings, and I tried to bounce the creature with three of its pings on the stack. And apparently it's still a pirate, even though it's bounced. So he got all the, all the cards to us still and managed to win the game. So I learned my lesson after that one. So I made sure not to do that. <laughs> so, so my favorite part of that was like, uh, uh, the hive, uh, description of like, yeah, they threw some spells at me. I just countered them and shrugged it off. You know? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm rushing through this. He, he had, he had a ramp through, which he tried to kill my land on tapper with. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was, uh, pretty much it. I think there was, uh, yeah. Uh, an O ring. He had an O ring as well, which I short shore up. So. I basically had all the right pieces and just drew into the right stuff. Get, a, get off me. Yeah. Off. <laughs> Righteous. So where can people find you? Uh, this is, uh, some part of this is pretty easy for me. Uh, you go through fits and spurts of being, uh, active on the, uh, home base discord server. Uh, uh, I think all of us have fits and spurts, uh, there. Uh, you're a moderator and in the, uh, the doc guide, uh, server, which is largely an informational stuff. We, uh, we do, uh, about once a year, I get a hair up my ass and, uh, uh, want to conduct a, uh, study and do some research and ask the community questions and try to deep dive and all that stuff. But by and large, uh, most of the social activity, uh, uh, happens, uh, in either the connoisseurs or sanctuary. Uh, you are also a moderator in the connoisseurs. Uh, so people can find you there. People can find you in the sanctuary. You play probably the most often, uh, in the sanctuary. Uh, I believe, uh, because the people that play games there most regularly have a schedule that's most conducive to, uh, where you're at. So that and the tournament, it's a tournament like practice server. So it's, uh, really good for finding people who also have to like the same grindy mindset, just want to practice for the tour upcoming tournaments that are coming up uh outside of that i don't i don't think you have any social media no twitter no uh no facebook none of that stuff uh, that's public anyway no 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 you can find me on moxfield <laughs> there it is and um that'll be more pertinent uh, once moxfield gets off their butt and makes it a uh social space as well so yeah if you're a gamer out there uh, looking to do the damn thing as my man, Jonathan here, uh, which I highly suggest, uh, reaching out to him, uh, hit him up with those DMS, uh, all 50 million of them, make him respond to each and every one. Uh, he absolutely deserves it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you can find him anywhere that, uh, uh, CPDH is being, uh, played, uh, observed, brewed, what have you. So my man, thank you for the interview. Uh, and then also like, 
uh, to re- reiterate what we said in the beginning, uh, Islan will be reaching out. Of course, this is like probably the soonest. It's the same day for him, the next day for me uh, for doing an interview, which is like the soonest I've ever been able to organize one of these things. Uh, so uh, details to follow if uh, if they're Islan and uh, Jonathan are able to line something up. Uh, they'll probably talk about some of the same things, but more specifically like deck tech and uh, all that stuff. So, yeah, my man. Appreciate you. All right. Thank you. Got it. Till the next time, folks.